Now it's time for Toker Talk Radio, the voice of the marijuana nation. What are you people? On dope? Where you can tow. I am here. Uh, or you can talk. I experimented with marijuana and didn't inhale. Or you can talk and talk. Ten federal criminal penalties for possession of up to one ounce of marijuana. While we talk about toke on Toker Talk Radio. So by the way, when it comes to pot, you know, if you're 40 years old, you live in a log cabin in Oregon, you got 12 giant pot plants in your backyard, have a ball. Live from beautiful Portland, Oregon at Rolla J Studios. Cannabis. Plus your calls live at 971-533-7111. They're walking on their pants with their cap on backwards, listening to the end of a man and Snoopy Snoopy Poop Dog. What's to keep somebody from getting all potted up on weed and then getting behind the wheel? Gateway theory doesn't work. It's a reality. Holland, is it real? Don't tease me. We're locking up people that take a couple of puffs of marijuana, and, and the, the next thing you know, they got 10 years. And now, here's your host, the guru of Gonta graphics, the sultan of sativa statistics, and the worst nightmare of a reefer mad prohibitionist. A polite, perspicacious, productive pothead with a propensity for PowerPoint. Radical Russ Belleville. All right, welcome everybody. Toker Talk Radio is on the air, and uh, we are talking with Brian Red here. He's hanging out in the studio with us. Hey, hi. And I'm here, and uh, on the line. Oh, and, and Left Wing Larry is coming down the stairs. And on the phone line, we've got Medi Grow Vermont. You know, we were just talking about the big uh, heroin problem, uh, and of course, Vermont is one of the states that's hardest hit by that. How you doing, Fran? Great, Russ. Great. Uh, I just thought I'd chime in on the back side of that with a question about. Uh, the uh, RICO-supported drug dealers that seem to be able to survive in Vermont for over 20 years selling cocaine and pills without getting arrested. Yeah, uh, that's 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 a good question because, you know, they've been, um, it's not like they didn't know they were there, right? Well, we got one in my neighborhood, Russ. I'm talking about somebody specifically. I won't give you specifics tonight, but I know there are ongoing investigations. But somehow this individual has been able to survive selling pills, cocaine, and other substances Paying his help half in cocaine and then renting them housing. Hmm. This is amazing. Wow. Huh, yeah. Uh, and, and hard to know, you know what to do with it, uh, although I know that marijuana is not the problem. It's part of the solution. Oh, certainly marijuana is not the problem. But it just amazes me with the governor uh, coming out and coming down so heavily on opiates. And yet this individual continues to thrive after 20 years of doing this. Yeah. You wonder, you know, is there a, is there a criminal informant thing going on? Is there some sort of deal going on? You never know. Well, that's the word on the street, basically. Yeah. It's a snitch thing, and who's supporting it? And it can only be Rico as far as we can figure out. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep, keep our eye on that in Vermont and the rest of what's going on as far as this uh, heroin problem. Yeah, I just thought I'd point that out. Basically, the government's supporting this at a time when we're trying to get rid of it. Anyway, thanks, guys, for bringing this uh, uh, to light. You're welcome. All right, so we've got uh, Left Wing Larry in the house. How are you doing, Larry? I'm doing just great. We're getting ready for our road trip. Yes. Going to be a good busy, time. Busy, busy, busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But this uh, this heroin overdose thing, this this is just disgusting to me that the drug manufacturers, they know what they're doing these big drug companies and they get their lobbyists in there and they, they know that if they buy a Senator or two, they buy a few representatives that sit on the right committees that handle the budgets for the DEA and office diversion control and all that. They know they control the purse strings. They can control all of the, uh, they can control all of the uh, aspects of it. And, and this is where these drug companies, you know, Purdue Pharma starting, starting off the 8,300 tons, now, and it's not just Purdue Farm anymore, there's a few more that can make it, but now, 150,000 tons? Really? Did pain go up 18 times? That's like the 18, you know, 100% increase? Really? I don't think so. What's gone up, a, a whole bunch, is the uh, pharmaceutical company profits on these kind of drugs. What better, what better product to sell than something that physically addicts somebody and forces them to keep coming back for your product. So for the DEA to turn a blind eye to these pharmaceutical companies and grant them year after year after year increases in their quota of how much OxyContin they can put out there, 
And then to be shocked and surprised that there's a prescription drug epidemic? Oh my gosh, who knew? And then to be shocked and surprised when they when they crack down on that, drive the prices up of the pills that are uh, at least at least an oxycodone pill, you know it was manufactured in a factory, you know it's not cut with anything weird, you, you generally know what the milligrams are on it, how potent it is, and so forth. Now that those cost 80 bucks a pill, someone who's got an opiate addiction is turning to a $4 baggie of heroin that is increasingly pure, and, you know, they can snort it, they can inject it, uh, all sorts of ways that you can do it. Lately, what's happened that's also been a part of this heroin epidemic is originally heroin was like the line, right, in the sand. Yeah, I'll do some drugs, but I ain't going to do no heroin. I ain't going to stick no needle in my arm, right? People are pretty serious about that. For Hell, that's still a taboo amongst almost anybody I know, right? They, I could never go cross that line and go to needles. And it used to be if you wanted to do heroin, you had to cross the line and do needles. That was the only way, really effective way you could do it because it was so cut, it was so impure, that that was the only way to really get high off of it. Well, now, now they're shipping in heroin that's pure enough and, and, and powder enough that you can snort the stuff. Now, if you're, a guy, if you're somebody who'd been partying in the past and you've snorted cocaine in the past, there's no new line to cross. You're just snorting a different powder. And then you get hooked on that heroin, you get hooked on that snorting, and after a while, that's not cutting it anymore, and that's what leads you into the injection. See, you get them hooked, and then you have to cross the line. You have to go across the line to, heroin, to, to the needle. And this, I think, is having a large part of this increase, this increased potency of it, and this increased ability, different ways of using it. Now, I've never used heroin, and I've never known anyone who has used heroin, at least that they've told me. So maybe if we can get some calls in on this, if you've got some experience, let us know. We'll talk about this subject a little bit more. But what I do know is that marijuana is the exit drug. It's gotten me off of alcohol. It's gotten me off of methamphetamine. When both of those were threatening to kill me. I'm going to take a break. We'll be right back. to the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the Marijuana Nation. Hey, tokers and tokettes, Radical Russ here to introduce you to my friend Matt and all the staff at Lush LED Lighting. Growing plants indoors can be a rewarding hobby, but electricity bills can go through the roof. Then you have to cool down all those big hot lights. It can drive a grower insane. Hey. With Lush LED Lighting, you can solve many of these issues and double your rewards. If you thought LEDs were... Meet the tech of today. Matt and his scientists have developed the perfect light for flowering plants with far less cost and heat. And the results? Let's just say I appear at a lot of events with the masters of indoor horticulture, and the harvests I saw from Lush LED Lighting were big, tight, sticky, and very effective. Check out LushLEDLighting.com right now and tell them Radical Russ sent you. Double your rewards and lower your expenses with Lush LED Lighting. Four Twenty Radio, the activist radio station. I'm Radical Russ Belville, and I want to thank you for listening to Four Twenty Radio. We couldn't survive without you and our sponsors, and I'd like you to check out one of our prime sponsors, the National Cannabis Coalition. I've been working with NCC since June of 2012, and I'm proud to be part of the team they have assembled. National Cannabis Coalition is building the partnerships with reformers, lawmakers, and industry we need to be successful. Visit the National Cannabis Coalition website at nationalcannabiscoalition.com or the easier-to-remember ncc420.com. That's where you'll get the exclusive first look at my radical rants, as well as informative articles from the nation's top cannabis pundits. Visit ncc420.com today, and if you have your phone handy, text Russ to 42420 to support NCC and 420 Radio. It's a free text message that helps us help you end adult marijuana prohibition. 
Learn more at ncc420.com, and thanks for supporting Independent Marijuana Legalization Public Radio. All right, welcome back, everybody. This is my favorite Swedish funk band, the Who the Funk Project. Who the Funk? All right, it's my only Swedish funk band. <laughs> but still, it's my favorite. This is a song called Relax, Baby, We'll Take Your Higher. But uh, we're going to go to the phone lines right now because we got a call coming in from the beautiful state of Hawaii. 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 You're on the air, 808. What's up? Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, yeah, I tried heroin. Yeah. Yeah, uh, 12 years old, my first time. Whoa! My brother in Chicago. I'm from Chicago. I was raised there. And, um, yeah, I shot it for my first time. I tried it. And, yeah, 12 years old in the bathroom of some gas station. And I threw up. And I went home and I passed out. And I didn't like it. I thought weed's better. <laughs> I don't throw up. I don't. You know, it's so. I can't disagree with that. I think weed's better, but I, you, I haven't tried the other, so I don't know. You know what? I I have I, I have heard just in, incidentally or coincidentally uh, that the people that like heroin do not like weed, and the oh, people no. that like weed do not like heroin. No, not true. Not true. That's not true. Well, this is what <laughs> I have I have known uh, or I've heard from other people. I, I think it's that way with uh, uh, maybe cocaine. Cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. No. It's yeah, not I, like that either. I do not because like cocaine. Because when you're coming down, you need weed. It can mellow you out. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yes. I know. Oh, yeah. I've been there too, so, man. Oh, so, yeah. But now it's just a... Good for um, you. 11 years, no alcohol. Yeah? Five years, no tobacco. All right. Congratulations, man. Good work. Thanks. And by the way, you know, it's high in Hawaii. That's, thank you. Yeah, yeah high I in Hawaii figured, from our chat I room. I thought it was. Much. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for your call, high in Hawaii. Well, we really appreciate it. And, you know, this whole, you know, heroin epidemic thing, oxycodone, oxycontin thing, I, I, I think a lot of what gets neglected in some of these talks about these things are what leads you to it in the first place. Now, there's a lot of people that get injured. Mm-hmm. You know, medical necessity, you know, right. like your Brett Favre. They start taking mm-hmm. Vicodin. Next thing you know, they're you know eating them like M and M's. Right. And mm-hmm. then some people end up, you know, when they can't get the Vicodin anymore, they end up switching to to the heroin. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also think that there's um, there is pain in this country. There's a lot of people who are suffering from pain, physical, actual, you know, physical pain. And when we deny them cannabis to deal with it. They have to go to the doctor and get some sort of painkiller to deal with it. Exactly. And if they had the option of using marijuana as a first resort, then they could save the Vicodins and the Oxys for the pain of, you know, real severe intensity. What I've discovered, at least in my personal use of cannabis, is that, well, for nerve pain, it's great. It'll kill nerve pain. But for other kind of pain that's not like nerve pain related kind of pain, it doesn't necessarily lessen the pain as much as it makes you not give a shit about the pain. It's like, oh, the pain's there, but it's not like overloading my senses to where I can't deal with it, right? Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes what happens is that people get this, and, and of course, you know, pharmaceuticals market this, yeah. that the pill is going to magically fix everything. And so people learn to not have to deal with pain. Oh, if I've got pain, I can just take a pill and it just goes away. Well. Some pain shouldn't go away. Some pain is a, me- a message <laughs> telling you there's something serious going on. Mm-hmm. Right. And some pain should be, you know, uh, you know, uh, not accepted, but uh, reacted to not with the idea of getting rid of it, but trying to find out what's the what's the root cause of it. Mm-hmm. And marijuana, I think, helps you do that better because you still know the pain's there mm-hmm. versus if you're all hooked up on, you know, Oxycontin. You don't think you have any pain. You're just out of it most of the time, and that's not cool. So I would, you know, I would venture that marijuana prohibition has a lot to do with the abuse of prescription painkillers, because there is real pain out there, and then you know people start on the, you know, they, I mean, it's weird to me. It's, it, this is a weird talk for me about pain. 
because I have it. You know, I have back pain. I have, you know, all sorts of little pains that I have. But I smoke a lot of weed. And so, like, okay, my back hurts, but yeah, it's not. I'll, I'll be fine, right? Mm-hmm. But I know people that, like, I was mentioning to someone, I can't remember the last little bottle of Tylenols or Advils or aspirins or anything I bought. <laughs> Yeah. I think I may have bought some like in the early 2000s when my wife asked me to buy some. Yeah. But for myself, I can't remember the last over-the-counter pain reliever I ever bought. I, I remember mine because I still have half the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's that's it, like my it, diclofenac that I, I prescription med yeah. that I got from the doctor because uh, I don't want to do any NSAIDs. Sure. At all. Yeah. Yeah, I and uh, I, I have probably, out of my last prescription, which is a 90-day supply, I have probably used maybe four pills out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's only when I get to severe pain and the the pot is not taking care of it. Right. That's when I move over to the, the prescription. Right. And uh, normally it's one and done. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then I smoke a another bowl or vaporize another bowl and uh then i'm fine yeah i go right ahead yeah i just go to bed (laughs) i I stopped buying the -the over-the-counter stuff when i started taking greenie capsules Mm -hmm. you know it's like uh, i didn't have any uh, health insurance so the only time i would go to the doctor was when something was really bad and i ended up in the emergency room you know like a couple years ago i had the abscess on my jaw i went in and you know, the doctors are like, so you haven't taken anything for the pain? I said, well, I took some of these greenie capsules, you know. And, and they're like, uh, and you're still talking with me? <laughs> you know? You're like, still functioning? You're still functioning with your face like that? And, you know, you're not screaming and rolling on the floor? And I was like, no. Yeah. And, I, and, you, and they're like, and you didn't take any other painkillers? I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> no that's kind of like uh, when I uh, went to see my... I had to take my MRIs before my back surgery, mm-hmm. oh. and I, I called the, the the doctor's office. I had to go there before I had the operation. I had to do a, a office visit because I'd never met the phys- the uh, uh, surgeon. Mm-hmm. So when I got in there finally, I I the doctor asked me. He says, "How did you get here?" And I said, "Well, I've got a minivan and." A, I laid down in the back of it, and my wife drove me here. And he says, "No, how'd you freaking physically get here? This has got to hurt like hell." <laughs> and I said, "Well, I talked to your nurse, and she says everybody is in pain, mm. and uh, you got to come in and get checked." And he said, "Well, if you want, I'll send you over to the hospital right now, and we'll do the operation on an emergency basis because this is bad." Yeah, mm. I mean the the nerve was you know bulged disc. Had the nerve pinched off, and yeah. and I was horrible shape. Well, I said, "Give me a couple of days." <laughs> Let me not just go cut on me right now. So after about uh, uh, two days, I get in there and uh, go into the hospital by wheelchair. The next day, walked out with no pain whatsoever, all by just a little three-quarter inch incision <laughs> wow it's amazing but it, it's cool. it's uh it, it's also something as far as health care coverage you know you mentioned that briefly about not having health care coverage and so when you do experience pain you don't treat it and then it gets worse and you don't treat it and it gets mm-hmm. worse you don't treat it and then it gets to the point where you got to go to the emergency room and then they got to give you vicodin or oxycontin yeah right? well i mean you try not to notice it you know you try to put it out of your mind because you've got other shit to do and no money to get it at you know, taken care of yeah and you know it, it's like me i'm to the point where you know, i'm ready to go back to the doctor <laughs> well yeah and this is something also as we as we fight to legalize marijuana that you know there's a ton of companies not excited about that idea mm-hmm. you know if you make pepto-bismol the idea that someone can smoke a joint and get rid of their nausea is not good for your bottom line. Yeah. Right. The, the, you make Tylenol, the idea that someone might smoke a joint and get rid of their headache is not good for the bottom line. The, yeah, All of the money. The, their whole tagline, take two and call me in the morning, you know, 
Now it's two puffs. That's right. Take two <laughs> puffs and call me in the morning. And this is something we have to think about as we move forward with legalization and how are you going to convince those shareholders, convince those companies, uh, you know, you're not going to convince them to support it. Can we at least get them out of the way? Can we at least get them to be neutral, to not make a stink about it? Just shut the hell up. But uh, <laughs> that's going to be easier said than done. Oh, but hey, look at that beautiful bud on the screen. It's 420 here on the Pacific Time. And uh, yeah. we're going to smoke that. Yeah. Not, 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 too, uh, not too big, but plenty strong. <laughs> See you in a minute. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? Man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? Reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. The law offices of Omar Figueroa would like to remind you to stand up for your rights. Please do not give up your precious liberties. There's nothing wrong with standing up for our constitutional rights, and in fact, it's the best way to honor the Constitution that recognizes our natural rights. Treat law enforcement with respect and respect the Constitution by standing up for your rights. If you are detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search and seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to speak with my attorney, Omar Figueroa. Omar Figueroa has more than a decade of experience in federal and California courts and graduated from Yale University, Stanford Law School, and Trial Lawyers College. Please contact the law offices of Omar Figueroa at 415-489-0420 or 707-829-0215 or on the web at omarfigueroa.com. As marijuana goes mainstream, you need to be armed with the facts. Nobody can teach you better than Dr. Mitch Earlywine, Ph.D. You may know Dr. Mitch from his column in High Times Magazine or his weekly appearance on The Russ Belville Show. Dr. Mitch is also the author of some of the best books on marijuana science, culture, history, and health, including Understanding Marijuana, Parents' Guide to Marijuana, Pot Politics, and more. Visit Amazon.com and search for Mitch Earlywine, that's E-A-R-L-E-Y-W-I-N-E, -E, and order your books today. You can also contact Dr. Mitch by email at 420research at gmail.com. INI, Red Eyes Reggae Flashback, starring Brian the Red. Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on 420radio.org. Stupid Prohibition Story! As a public service, the Russ Belleville Show reminds you that smoking marijuana does not make one stupid. However, some stupid people do smoke marijuana, and Prohibition is always waiting for another victim. Learn your lesson from today's Stupid Prohibition Stories. With your Stupid Prohibition Stories, I'm old-timey 1920s radio reporter Freddy Farrakh. Police in East Texas have arrested a woman after she called them to complain about the quality of the marijuana she had purchased from a dealer. Lufkin Police Sergeant David Casper said Monday that an officer went to the home of 37-year-old Evelyn Hamilton to hear her complaint that the dealer refused to return her money after she objected that the drug was substandard. Casper says she pulled the small amount of marijuana from her bra when the officer asked if she still had it. She was arrested Friday on charges of possession of drug paraphernalia. Hamilton said Monday that she spent $40 on, quote, seeds and residue. She says she called police when she got no satisfaction from the dealer's family. I'm Freddy Farrakh with your stupid prohibition story. Only in Texas. Yeah. Now in... in, in uh... In Washington or Colorado, that Hello, would be a Texas legitimate dispatch. complaint. Yeah, I, I just bought me some marijuana, 
And uh, and and the dealer, he won't give me my money back because it's it, it's shaky. It's seeds and stems. This sucks. And, and are you still in possession? Of I, I still have the marijuana. Come on over to my house and uh, send a police officer. Okay, we'll dispatch an officer. <laughs> They'll be there to arrest you shortly. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, play our fail music. Please. What do we gotta do for these people, man? Smoking does not make you stupid, <laughs> but stupid people do smoke marijuana. Yes, they you know, do. We should start, you know, taking drugs. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Uh, if you do them, you're bad because drugs are bad. Okay. But marijuana's not a drug. <laughs> Don't get high. Yeah, no, <laughs> Holly. I don't want to get high right now. But uh Let me stupid towel go away. <laughs> so then just just so we all learn our lesson, um <laughs> in a prohibition market you don't get to complain. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's about the, I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> it's like in a prohibition market, you know, they don't give you what you want and they won't make good on it. You just go to someone else. <laughs> you go to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh. It was all it was all sta- uh, seeds and residue. <laughs> seeds and residue. <laughs> residue. We call it shake out here, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, we call it crumble weed, whatever. You know. It might have not even been marijuana. Oh, yeah, could have they been They just dust. charged you or with paraphernalia, not yeah. with uh, the, having the drugs. Maybe it was right. Re- it it may have been an oregano. <laughs> yeah. well, some stems and seeds in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, or stems, seeds, and actual dirt. I've seen people t- wow. selling mm-hmm. bags of, you know, they call it dirt weed. No, it's just dirt. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, just dirt. dirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and but there's seeds in there, so if you throw that baggie into your backyard, chances are it maybe some weed will grow. Yeah, yeah. Give that a shot. But uh, <laughs> this contrasts nicely with the story out of Denver, where they had complaints about this uh, this one particular manufacturer's edibles. People were buying these chocolate bars, oh, these uh-huh. medicated mm-hmm. chocolate bars with 100 milligrams of THC in them, mm-hmm. and they said. Damn, I ate the whole bar. It didn't even get high. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, right? So there they have, actually that. have a marijuana enforcement division that, yeah. that yes. checks that shit. Like, yes. This is what the part of what I want to be you know, involved with here in Oregon. Yeah. I want to talk about this before we even had dispensaries. Oh, I want to yeah. be a compliance officer. I want to make sure that when you go into a dispensary, ask for some of the train wreck and take it home. It's actually train wreck. Yeah. You know, well, it's nice. like, you know, instead of just, be- you know, having to believe what they mark something or, you know, in this case, there was a hundred milligram THC bar mm-hmm. and they ended up getting samples, top samples from, what is it? Four different dispensaries? Yeah, four different locations it's over a four month over period. Over a four month period. <laughs> okay. And they had some that tested as low as what was eight? Zero point milligram- three. Zero point three <laughs> milligrams. You know, and, I think, milligram bar. and I think the maximum was something well, around fifty. No, they actually one of them, one manufacturer was like one hundred and sixty one. It was oh, over medicated. But this but one particular point, it was though. this one particular brand. Four different samples came out at zero point two, zero point three, zero point five, and five. I think it was mm. milligrams yeah. in a hundred milligram, 100 milligram bar. bar. And the guy, the manufacturer, when they got a hold of it, oh, uh, well, it must have been it must have got a bad batch. Yeah. Well, it was like 70,000 batches in between mm-hmm. all of their... <laughs> yeah, it's like they have got the batch number and, you know, the location of where they got it and, you know, the date, the, the manufacture date, you know, all that. It's not like, yeah. you know, they now just this, sampled one bar and said, oh, look, you're cheating people. And, <laughs> and this is not the first time in human history where someone manufactured a cookie, a cake, a crumble or whatever, <gasps> said it had weed in it and then it didn't. It's Has not? It been happening in dead shows and concerts and festivals for years and years and years, but this is the first time there's a government agency to go after them. <laughs> and I love that. That is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Oh, yeah. It's like if, if they had that kind of enforcement at festivals. So we, well, know. and that leads me to like, you know, you make that mention, that hypothetical of, you know, if you go by train wreck, it actually turns out to be train wreck. Mm-hmm. I want not only that, but, you know, whenever there's a big story that happens, and then, like two days later, there's a new strain named after that story. I mm. love it. You oh, know, like oh, when uh, Obama Kush, Obama Kush, or when Sanjay Gupta came out, well, or Michael Gupta. Phelps happened. Yeah. Oh, we have a Michael Phelps strain. Oh, no, you don't. You had some low ass strain that you weren't selling much of. You renamed it Michael Phelps and jumped the price 10, 10, 10 bucks. Yeah, that's it's like what there, you did. There was some story on like I think it was like was it Kevin Costner or some some stupid actor and then they you know I'm not saying he's stupid but some actor and they all of a sudden there was you know like five different strains that were all called that yeah. you know and they just yeah it's the same thing like you said you know I've 
I've worked with some of these people, you know. So I know mm-hmm. it's just whatever's not moving, they're going to rename it. Right. You know. It's and like, how would this work in the real world? Like, imagine you, there's a can of Chef Boyardee SpaghettiOs, <laughs> and there's a can of, I don't know, Hunt's uh, Spaghetti, right? And then somebody takes them both home, mixes them together, puts them in a new can, and calls them something else. I mean, th- I, I, knows. I would like there to be some sort of like genetic or brand consistency well, among marijuana strains because what one guy calls OG Kush, what another guy calls OG Kush, ain't the same OG Kush. And that's why there's such going to be a great market for these analytical and testing companies mm-hmm. because I uh, just over the you know uh, weekend yesterday I went to the uh, multiple sclerosis medical marijuana kind of primer meeting uh, here in Portland um, put on by the Multiple Sclerosis Society of Oregon. And um, there were a couple different uh, places there. One was a uh, testing lab and the other one was a dispensary that was, you know, uh, with that lab. And they they were talking about, you know, how, oh, well, you know, we're, if somebody comes in looking for a specific strain that had been working well for them for their condition, they can say, well, we're all out of that, but let me check the cannabinoid profile against our database and see what's got a similar, you know, profile. Mm-hmm. Oh, look, looks like this, you know, Blue Dream has real similar to, you know, that we're out of has like this close to this blue magoo over here. So why don't we try some of that for you, you know, and yeah. that's that's where it's going to come down to. You know, um, like in Uruguay, aren't they? <laughs> they're going to be doing genetic tagging mm-hmm. of their strains, which I think is beautiful because then, you know, every little tiny phenotype, genotype, whatever you breeders want to call them, every different varietal of the plant will have a number or some kind of identifier that, you know, at, it'll be tracked saying, oh, look. I tried this strain, you know, and I have this condition, and it helped with these symptoms from it. Yeah. And that's all going to go into this gi- giant database that soon doctors will be able to look into. Yeah, I would yeah. love that. And, you know, Hi in Hawaii's got a question in the chat room. He says, how do those people know what the name is of the pot? How can they be traced? Well, the naming... Lineage. Well, the, the naming's kind of tough a little bit because then you're getting into entomology and who who made yeah, up who the Who actually made the but strain. But the actual genetic structure of the plant, I mean, we can trace, like you know dogs all the way back to which dogs were the ancestors of these dogs and which ancestors of those dogs and they all went back to the, the gray wolf right well we did the same thing with the marijuana plant they you could trace its genetics all the way back to the original indica the original sativa the original ruderalis mm-hmm. but and that's what we're talking about more than what is the official super silver haze that's just a brand name yeah. what's the actual genetic type of that thing yeah it's like there's this um you know, more recent strain um, around here. Anyway, it's kind of more recent. I think over the last three or four years, uh, called Duck's Foot, and it. I think that it's a, a throwback strain. It's an ancient strain because the leaves are slightly rounded instead of uh, variegated, like mm-hmm. you know, like normal cannabis leaves. But you know, hey, it grows grape weed. You know, well. It has a completely different cannabinoid profile. I had a buddy who was testing some for somebody. Um, you know, to give them a strain review. And they said it didn't do nothing for them. They gave it to me and boom, mental focus, clarity, you know, O C D gone, you know, mm-hmm. most of my You know, I was flavors. watching I was watching Cosmos last night and I hope everybody Yay, out there is Cosmos. watching Yay. Cosmos. I've got I'm I'm DVRing all the episodes in HD and I'm not deleting them. I will have all 13 by the time I'm done and I will force people to watch them. <laughs> I, I, I'm waiting until you've got all 13 then I'm going to watch the whole season. He's going to binge watch? Okay. Yeah, that's binge what I do, man. And, I can't because I can't watch a season. I mean, just a couple episodes or something. Oh, no. I, I got that OCD. I yeah, got, yeah. I need con- closure. Conclusion. And it's so and it's so good without commercials. But last <laughs> night on, uh, on Cosmos, uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson explored how uh, Sir Isaac Newton missed his chance to invent astrophysics because mm-hmm. Isaac Newton was looking at uh, the spectrum of light uh, through a prism yep. and was going to look at it through a magnifying glass to see. And if he had, he done that, he'd have seen the striations that you see uh, mm-hmm. when you're doing astrophysics, but he yep. didn't do that. It didn't happen until William Herschel in the 1800s. But what they learned was that the spectrum of light, you know, your, your rainbow spectrum has these little striations in it that mm-hmm. are where the electrons from certain uh, the electrons in certain elements m- cast a shadow, kind of, 
Uh, it's mm-hmm. a weird metaphor. But basically, you can look it's at... It's like they overlap each other. You can see the, the front. Kind of, yeah. And you can see the, the rainbow spectrum and, and that hydrogen will put a black line here and here and here. Uh-huh. But helium will put a black line there and there. And then strontium will put a line here, 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 right? And so based on that, that's how astronomers can look at stars and say not only what is the star made of, but right. whether it's going away or coming closer to us based on its redshift, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So based on that, I'm, I'm watching that last mm-hmm. night and I'm thinking... Wouldn't that be great if there was like a marijuana scale like that, where all I would have to do is look at one icon or graphic or something, and it would give me a series of maybe numbers like CBC3, CBN2, THC5, or I don't even know how it would be put together. You got your terpenes. There's so many things to consider, and I'm not even going to pretend I'm knowledgeable enough about the plant to be able to pull it off. But as a consumer, how cool would that be if there was just a consistent label where I could go, I don't need to know that it's Super mm-hmm. Silver Haze or Le- Larry Cush or whatever the hell they want to call it. Mm-hmm. I know that me, I need a CBC3, I need at least a CBN2, I need at least a THC5, and then I could pick from a lot and of different yeah, choices. Yeah, and then different sesquiterpenes that, you know, would enhance your mood based sure. on that, you know. so That's what I want. I'm going to find, I'm gonna find a, a link to a, a, gra- a you know one of the charts of these uh, analyticals so okay. that you can display it you know just so that people can get a kind of an idea of yeah and I know that Leafly has done some work on this and some of the sites have done some work on this to some extent but it's still kind of based in that well this is kind of a haze and this is kind of a cush and this is kind of well let's get away from this this vague you know prohibition based branding. And into some real accurate scientific based naming and branding and labeling. That's what I'm hopeful for with legalization. All right, we got to take a break and we'll come back. See you in a minute. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Thrasher from the Herb Thrasher Flower Hour. Now get ready for Herb Age Designs for the proud cannabis consumer. Herb, Herb Age Designs, Designs, lifestyle gear for the 420 friendly. Herb, Herb Age Designs, Designs, home of the famous lighter leash. Herb, Herb Age, Age Designs. Designs, get your Herb Age t-shirts and hoodies and show your pride. Herb, Herb Age Designs. Designs, we've got frisbee golf discs and durable hemp gear. Herb Age Designs. We've got shot glasses, drinking glasses, coffee mugs, and beer cozies. Check us out on Facebook and online at HerbAgeDesigns.com. And follow Herb Age and Herb Thrasher on Twitter. We'll see you at this year's Hemp Fest. Crank it up. Support the Russ Belleville Show. Text the word Russ to 420-420 and connect with the National Cannabis Coalition. You can also send 10 bucks to the Russ Belleville Show right from your smartphone. That's Russ to 420-420. You're listening to Radical Russ on the Russ Belleville Show. Four twenty radio, the home of marijuana experts. Georgia. Hi, this is Willie Nelson. Alcohol prohibition didn't work in the nineteen twenties, and marijuana prohibition isn't working today. It's time we stopped arresting responsible marijuana smokers. It's the fair thing to do. For more information, contact Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Call toll free eight 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 six seven N O R M L. Or visit their website at no. He was a famous trumpet man from Archie. 
Chicago way. He had a boogie style that no one else could play. He was the top man at his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now, a blowing reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. They made him blow a bugle for his Uncle Sam. It really brought him down because it couldn't jam. The captain seemed to understand. Because the next day the cat went out and drafted a band. And now the company jumps when he plays reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. A toot, a toot, a toot to the other, a toot to the other, to the bar. Welcome back, everyone. 40 after the hour. That's music from the Andrews Sisters from uh, 1940. I'm going to say two. 41, maybe. Got to be in that era. But love the harmony singing. And this is the kind of music we play every Monday night on the new Viper Hour. Join me at 8 o'clock Pacific time every Monday for a look at early 20th century Big band, swing, jazz, generally the reefer jazz of Cab Calloway, Louis Armstrong, Gene Krupa, and the like. But we expand our show to just about every type of music that was popular before the era of rock and roll. Light up a bowl and take a trip back with the new Viper Hour tonight at 8 p.m. I'm going to let that run just because if I, go to, if I cut, it'll just cut. It's a video, so let's just enjoy the end here. Boogie 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 Boy of Company B, classic music from the 1940s. You're listening to Toker Talk Radio here at Rolla J Studios in beautiful Potland, Oregon. We're so glad you could be here with us today. And uh, there is a news story that I didn't get into the uh, headlines today, but it's definitely something we should cover, man. <laughs> Pot Growers Association launched in Jamaica. Yeah, man. Right. A group of influential Jamaicans gathered Saturday to launch an association of supposed future marijuana cultivators as momentum builds toward loosening laws on prohibiting pot on the Caribbean island. This is from CBS Denver. Uh, Some of the folks from Canada went down. Some of the folks from Colorado went down. And they went to Kingston to launch the Ganja Future Growers and Producers Association. The group will lobby for creation of a regulated cannabis industry on the tropical island that is nearly as famous for its pot as for its scenic beaches and unique culture. The the event was emceed by the mayor of Kingston, Angela Brown Burke, who's also a senator and vice president of the ruling People's National Party. Fantastic. So uh, this would be like um, Mayor Rahm Emanuel of Chicago, who is also Senator Rahm Emanuel from Illinois and vice president of the Democratic Party. (laughs) Right. That's about the equivalent. We're talking in Jamaican terms. Right. Uh, God, God help us if Rahm Rahm Emanuel gets all those jobs. (laughs) It'd be about as bad as uh, Rob Ford. (laughs) Yeah, really. Uh, But her husband, Paul Burke, is one of the leaders of the new Ganja Futures Association and also an influential People's National Party figure. The groups that spoke in support of the venture included the country's Scientific Research Council, the group, the country's Agricultural Society, and the Jamaican campus of the University of West Indies. Uh, now, they note that uh, marijuana has been pervasive but outlawed in Jamaica for a century. Uh, now, I got some friends back in uh, Nampa, uh, back in my hometown, a uh, married couple who go to Jamaica every year. Because it's cheap. (laughs) Once you get there, I mean, getting there is expensive. But once you get there, it's cheap. And the ganja is plentiful. Mm -hmm. And they Mm -hmm. they say, well, yeah, it's illegal. Like, don't be in the city flaunting weed. Yeah. Once you leave the city, yeah. though, forget about it. It's all over the place. It's kind of like uh, in Amsterdam. Have you been it's to Jamaica? It's not legal in Amsterdam. Yeah. Have you been to Jamaica by any Oh, sense? yeah. You have? Mm-hmm. Oh, when was that? Uh, that's been several years. Ago. <laughs> that's been probably, oh, about 14, 15 years See, ago. See, I always have to ask because, like, Larry's been everywhere. <laughs> Larry's been almost everywhere, man. It's just uh, impressive to me. You know they had a uh, uh, a uh, the ten best streets in the world on MSN the other day. Okay, 
I've been on six of them. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Uh, so, yeah, they're pointing out Jamaica and uh, the possibilities in Jamaica and Charles Nesson. Now, this name, if this name doesn't sound familiar, Charles Nesson, Harvard Law Professor Charles Nesson. Also, the Harvard Law Professor Charles Nelson, who def- Nesson, who defended Keith Strop and Rick Cusick when they were busted for smoking a joint in Boston Common in 2007. <laughs> that Charles Nesson. So he was down there and he said Jamaica and marijuana are basically synonymous due to the homegrown spiritual movement of Rastafari and pot steeped cultural expressions like reggae music. He said the global marijuana movement, quote, needs the leadership of Jamaica. But there is a danger. The danger is that you will miss the boat, that you will talk too long. Uh, and then uh, warned Nesson, who elicited loud cheers when he acknowledged being a God damn CBS websites that refresh. <sighs> Warren Nesson, who elicited loud cheers when he acknowledged being a marijuana smoker, unlike several Jamaican speakers who carefully stressed they did not smoke the locally banned herb. <laughs> the new Jamaican association is starting as some government officials have publicly taken up the idea of loosening pot restrictions, including health minister Fenton Ferguson, who said late last year, he was quote, fully on board and quote with medical marijuana. This may be a shock to people that didn't know that marijuana wasn't legal in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, most people think it is, Yeah, uh, but it is not. No. And this would be good. And, and th- there was, um, I don't know if I can find the, uh, quote here. He was talking about the growth potential in uh, Jamaica and that reform supporters believe Jamaica could become a powerhouse in medical marijuana research, a global export market, and the development of new pot products. Yeah, they have a, they have a little scam down there. Yeah. Uh, what the dealer will do that's selling, he will sell you the weed and then give the cop a high sign or the under undercover cop yeah. and he comes over and busts you and then solicit a bribe off of you <laughs> to get out <laughs> so you got to buy the weed twice basically you got basically yeah <laughs> well i'd say about three times if you get caught in the scam because the, the yeah. ticket the guy's going to give you is for you know you might pay 20 bucks for the the weed and uh the little bag of weed, you know, a quarter, and uh, uh, then you're going to pay pay about fifty to sixty or maybe eighty dollars for your your fine, mm-hmm. which is nothing more than a bribe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I have seen so much Bob Marley uh, branded items just in the past three years or so. The new headphones, for God's sake, Bob Marley headphones. Mm-hmm. How they long they before they legalize marijuana in Jamaica? Before Bob Marley coffee, they'll be all over the place, man. I, they need Bob Marley speed stick, and then it'll be over. <laughs> Bob Marley speed stick. Is it is it Marley scented? That's what. <laughs> no, it smell like weed. It smell like weed. Okay, <laughs> but hey, it'll be I'm, over. I'm looking forward to uh, Jamaica uh, becoming more tolerant of marijuana. Like they're not already, but okay. Uh, also tonight, uh, the championship uh, college basketball games on UConn and Kentucky. Okay, and one's a seven seed and one's an eight seed. Seven and eight seed. That's yeah. pretty rare. I that don't think that's happened rare. a long time. But in the other side, have you seen the NCAA women's matchup? Two UConn undefeated and- team, UConn and Notre Dame. Is it? One's thirty nine and zero, and the other's thirty seven and zero. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So we're checking out some college hoops tonight as well. All right. uh, And did you find any of those? uh, I couldn't find the ones I was looking for that had the broad range. Um, But we'll find some and get you to. Hey, uh, Hi in Hawaii in our chat room says, we don't call it duck foot. I forgot. It's web foot, and I've been growing it on and off for 10 years. Oh, (laughs) that's cool. Well, of course, here in Oregon, it would have to be called Duck foot. Of course it's <laughs> duck foot out here. <laughs> Everyone we know is getting ready to head out to uh, Denver for 420. Just about everybody. Uh, I've seen Coral Reefer making her plans. She's got a new photo up. Awfully cute, Coral. Little mm. tube top with uh, gold pot leaves. Mm. Two of them. Yep. It's awfully cute, we'll Coral. We'll let you guess where they are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, very cute. Very loving it. Loving it. And, all right, so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will uh, wind up the show. 
bring you our last 10 minutes and get you ready for Stony Sundays with the aforementioned Coral Reaper. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Ever wonder how often to change your bong water? The most effective method for baking pot brownies? The best destinations for a ganja getaway? How to hide herb in your car? Whether to grow your own? How precisely to legalize it? Or how something as wonderful as marijuana ever got to be illegal in the first place? Finally, you can find all these answers and much more in the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook, featuring 420 things to do when you're stoned. Since 1974, High Times Magazine has covered marijuana in all its aspects and wonders, from cultivation to legalization to the herbs enduring and exalted place in popular culture. Packed with inside information, the official High Times Pot Smokers Handbook rolls all of this collected wisdom together into a single indispensable ganja guide, including an entertaining look at marijuana's history. Profiles of herb-friendly travel destinations and festivals, favorite potluck recipes from the High Times staff, smoking skills, advocacy and activism, essential marijuana movies and songs, profiles of famous cannabis strains, comprehensive growing information, celebrity endorsements, and much more. This is truly, finally, the ultimate guide to green living. The Russ Belville Show with Radical Russ Belville from Portland, Oregon, live weekdays, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. GMT, with replays at 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. Pacific Time, right here on 420radio.org. Georgia. Hi, this is Willie Nelson, and I need your help. Alcohol prohibition didn't work in the 20s, and marijuana prohibition isn't working today. It's time we stop arresting law-abiding citizens because they prefer marijuana over alcohol. Nearly 2,000 Americans are arrested every day on marijuana charges. We're unfairly destroying the lives and careers of hundreds of thousands of people each year simply because they smoke marijuana. These are not criminals, they're average citizens like you, good neighbors who work hard, raise families, pay taxes, and contribute to their communities. We need your help to end marijuana prohibition once and for all. It's the fair thing to do. For more information, contact Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Call toll-free 888-67-NORML or visit their website at norml.org. Well, I wish I had a bowl, a good green reefer, a big fat young bee, much, much sweeter. Hide it, don't hide it. Hide it, don't hide it. Just hide it, don't hide it. Hide it, don't hide it. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Don't hide it. Well, Welcome back. It's uh, 53 after, and uh, that's Sean Re- Reefer and the Resin Valley Boys with Light It, Don't Hide It. And again, if you missed our uh, headlines, we have uh, breaking news, just great news to announce that uh, uh, Maryland's governor uh, is going to sign bills uh, that are going to turn Maryland from a barely a medical marijuana state to a medical decrim state. Here's the deal. Medical and decrim? Yeah. Medical and decrim. I'll, I'll explain. Medical and decrim. Yeah, because yeah. uh, yeah, we, we have some states that have decrim. Mm-hmm. Now, some states have medical. Mm-hmm. And some states have both, mm-hmm. like Oregon. So it's going to become one of those states. Uh, Maryland, for a while, has had an ineffective medical marijuana law that basically allowed research hospitals to uh, administer limited medical marijuana to limited patients, and no research hospitals did it. 
<laughs> so it's like the law exists, but it's no good because nobody's doing it, right? That's kind well, of like George's medical. Yeah, you know, like George's medical thing. bill, you know, yeah. like some of these CBD bills and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so one of the bills here allows physicians to directly recommend uh, marijuana to patients uh, to provide and allow dispense and create dispensaries as well. So it will become an actual medical marijuana state. Mm-hmm. And um, the decrim bill, we reported on this on Friday, the decrim bill was dead. The guy, the Republican that heads the House Judiciary Committee basically tabled it, killed it. Their session ended today. It just ended. On Saturday, the Congression, the, the Legislative Black Caucus there in Maryland, backed by the ACLU, and they've been pushing this decrim because it's so racially disproportionate how many African Americans get arrested. It's like eight to one. Especially in the Baltimore. Right? Yeah, especially in Baltimore, right? Yeah. So they've been pushing and pushing and pushing on this bill. And it's only a decrim of 10 grams. Mm. It's just 10 grams. It's not even a full ounce, right? But mm-hmm. still. Not even half an ounce. Yeah, so still it's got it got passed, and it'll be a $100 first offense, $250 second offense, $500 third offense with mandatory rehab. So it's not the best decrim either, right? Right. Still, we are going from it being basically nothing in Maryland to half-fast decrim and decent medical marijuana. Yeah, and that's a major. It's not quite uh, Ohio's... Uh, uh, quarter pound for a hundred dollars. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. But it's progress, and it's progress on the Atlantic coast. Uh, it's progress near the uh, the capital, near Washington D.C. They can't help but read this in the Washington Post and the Baltimore Sun and all the papers that they read uh, out there. So this is great news. This great uh, uh, victory in the state of Maryland. So just want to make sure that everyone was aware of that going on coming up next here on 420 radio. We got the latest episode of stony Sundays, which I am downloading and converting as we speak. <laughs> my, my license expired for my download software. I had to, had to oh, re-up the license. So we're getting that. And uh, also we've got a new Hollywood Hemptress hour that's being downloaded and it is the uh, salute to Roland A. Doobie, uh-huh. a.k.a. Ronnie Lee Smith, who passed away uh, last week. Uh, I don't know why, but did. And uh, so we'll have that for you coming up on Hollywood Hemptress Hour when it's ready to go. And uh, so far, that's uh, most of the new stuff. We've got uh, some new uh, Coral Reefer videos as well uh, that you can check out. But um They'll all be coming up next on 420 Radio. And then again tonight at 8 p.m. Pacific time, you've got the new Viper Hour. I'll be bringing you the Reefer Jazz and other great music from the early 20th century. So make sure to check that out. All right. Winding up the uh, news today in marijuana, we've got one other story uh, just really quick that we wanted to uh, talk about a little bit. And that has to do with uh, the um, where's the story? I just lost it. Oh, I hate it when that happens. What's the story, man? I, I, oh, th- this issue of uh, the tribes is what I wanted to talk about. Uh, in Washington State, the Yakima Nation, and we reported this a couple of months ago, but they're still moving forward. And now a new tribe, the Suquamish tribe, mm-hmm. uh, is considering uh, this is this is kind of the opposite. The Yakima Nation in Washington doesn't want any marijuana businesses growing, anything like that going on in the Yakima lands. The Suquamish st- uh, tribe has broached getting into the marijuana business. Right. Yes. The tribe wants to submitted a proposal on how sales, marijuana sales by, by the tribe, how that would work. Now, marijuana is still federally illegal, and Indian law yes. and federal law, there's mm-hmm. a lot of stuff going on there with treaties and stuff, but it's, it's like different from tribe to tribe and mm-hmm. reservation to reservation because there's so many treaties. So this is fascinating to me. The Liquor Control Board says uh, the production and sale of marijuana on, or I'm sorry, um, Leonard Forsman, the uh, chairman of the Suquamish tribe, told the Liquor Control Board, quote, the production and sale of marijuana on our tribal lands is simply something we are exploring and thought it vital to approach the Liquor Control Board as part of the process. Uh, it has a responsibility, the tribe has a responsibility to explore business opportunities that may help raise funds for its people and its government. <laughs> Now, the liquor board's operating under the assumption that the federal government doesn't want pot sold on Indian lands. The agency won't make any agreement until federal officials say otherwise. But the U.S. Dis- Department of Justice uh, has been taking a hands-off approach on Washington and Colorado, so who knows what's going to happen here? I mean, the, the, the tribes are technically sovereign nations, so... Right, so you, <laughs> you could wind up, uh, you know, every tribe in every state 
Yeah, I wonder if Open a tripod it up on their land tries you know, to take it up like before the casinos, a state does. That you would, know, that would be awesome. Hey, that's all the time we got for today. But uh, thanks for all the enjoyable conversation. We'll be back tomorrow with more news and interviews you can use for the cannabis community. For Left Wing Larry and Brian the Red, I'm Radical Russ. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down This is your 420 Radio News.